Well, we are today left with only four of the original 12 announced hero talents from The War Within of a few days ago. We went through the four more disappointing ones, then we moved on to the four okay, decent to even good ones, so we're now left with the four, the four best ones. If not best, the ones that show more potential, perhaps they have potential in the theme, in the flavor for each of the specs, or perhaps just in how they are going to be working for the specs. So we are starting with the one that is the, the least, the least of the best, you know, it was right at the edge together with yesterday's hero talent, which is the conduit of the celestials, the cross between Mistweaver and Windwalker. Now this one, to have a TLDR, is basically the fist weaving melee healing tree of Mistweaver. It's not nearly as focused on Windwalker, right? So the whole thing is giving you a 90 second cooldown ability, which is basically shifting power of a mage. It's a, it's a pulsing AoE damage that does more damage the more enemies it's hitting, on a 90 second cooldown, the only extra compared to shifting power is that this celestial conduit is tied to summoning or having these bonus effects on certain celestials proccing when they come to your to your aid, when they come and help you to do something. Like this one, you have a 15% chance with Tiger Palm and Vivify to summon Zhuen to do damage to a nearby enemy. With this one, you have Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to summon Chiji, as well as, of course, your own Windwalker and Mistweaving talents already being able to summon some of the Celestials. So you can have extra effects, like for example, gaining more secondary stats, the more of these celestials that are assisting you as well as getting you to get more movement speed whenever a celestial is assisting you together with being able to summon them all four at once when you actually use your 90 second cooldown. As mentioned, many of these effects have primarily a more a Mistweaving Monk focused uh, effect because you buff the damage as well as the healing of quite a few of your abilities. You have effects like Juan's Guidance making your teaching of the monastery have a 15% chance to refund a charge on top of getting even more damage with Tiger Palm. So you have a series of effects benefiting more a Mistweaving Monk. So obviously also this would benefit the Mistweaving monk more in mythic plus more so than the raid since that's where generally speaking your fist weaving style of healing is focused on when you play mistweaver but also for windwalker it's just basically a flat out extra cooldown to play around and you know when you play a dps when you play a dps having an extra aoe cooldown on a 90 second cooldown it's always pretty handy especially in in mythic plus to time with more with more powerful trash packs so it's overall a pretty good set of talents for the crossover between Mistweaver and Windwalker, which is sometimes hard because you're mixing a healer with a DPS, so maybe it's hard to make it uh, satisfying for both, but at least in this case it has turned out, especially when you can compare it with the previous version, the cross between Windwalker and Brewmaster, this one has come out more more fleshed out more more thematic also playing around your celestials which already can be summoned from your normal talent trees so you have further synergy there so overall it's a pretty good it, it's a pretty good set of talents for these two specs the next one in line is a crossover between arms and fury warrior slayer starting with blizzard's point that in the war within fury warriors will also have access to bladestorm that's of course a necessary point to make before going over this talent tree because this talent tree has a lot of a lot of points around bladestorm and the first point points this out by having more stacking damage with execute which is interesting or rather hopefully is going to be better for fury since execute nowadays is a more staple of arms damage more so than fury very good path down the self-sustain line where you get to have more chances of making sudden death even better with more resets of execute and on top of that now you heal for 50% of the damage you are doing when sudden death has procced with even more further stacking damage extra on your execute but the real you know the real point is this cycle this cycle with unrelenting onslaught when you execute a target that you have marked for death which is your original default starting point 
your attacks having an RNG chance to apply mark for execution on the target. When you execute the target, you reduce the cooldown of Blade Storm by five seconds per stack of marked for execution and apply stacks of overwhelmed equal to the number of stacks of mark of execution. This stacks up three times. So the TLDR is that when you trigger a Slayer Strike applying mark for execution, once you have done this three times and then you execute, your blade storm has a 15 second reduced cooldown and you gain and you gain as many stacks of overwhelmed as the stacks you consumed overwhelm making the target take more damage so it's a constant loop of your attacks applying this mark and then your execute consumes the mark to reduce the cooldown of blade storm and then once you actually use those marks the target will take more damage you also have some cool, interesting effects like Frenetic Flurry, which has your Overpower and Bloodthirst have a chance to unleash a brief Bladestorm, which is basically just a cleave, a single hit of Bladestorm once in a while, and the new quality of life that you can now pummel and Stormbolt while Bladestorming. If we were to pick one particular negative about this Warrior 3, is that the defensiveness isn't really there. Besides the self-healing, which, you know, it can still count as defensiveness, if we were actually talking about damage reduction, about defensive cooldowns, about things to stay alive, we have nothing here. The only thing you have is just more sustain through sudden death procs. So if you were looking for more defensiveness, it doesn't come from here. However, it does have a pretty satisfying loop of damage between applying the marks and then consuming the marks to get the blade storm off cooldown and having blade storm usable way more often. It's a similar, it's a similar satisfying feedback loop like the ones we mentioned for the for the Havoc and Vengeance Demon Hunter 3 we looked at yesterday. Same goes for the Frost and Arcane Mage 3 we looked at yesterday. Day. this one has a similar level of satisfying loop for both arms and fury now moving away from satisfying loop we have another combo in here which has had a lot of talk at once it was revealed which is the crossover of death knights not the one we looked at yesterday the death bringer between blood dk and frost dk with the loop around reaper's mark and exterminate but the another one the rider of the apocalypse now Many, many, many players were stuck on this talent on, oh wow, I can now be mounted in combat. You know, nobody cares. We're not giving this talent tree a good rating just because you can mount in combat in out world, open world garbage content. Nobody cares. Same goes for the updated Death's Advance, which is now basically a Divine Steed lasting 10 seconds. It's still a meme of an ability. It will improve your mobility by somewhat, but that's not really what this entire talent tree is about. The talent tree is, of course, about you summoning four of your Riders of the Apocalypse, giving you different buffs based on the Rider chosen. Morgrain is just a moving Death and Decay that follows you around. White Mane casts Undeath on the target, dealing Shadow Frost damage per stack over 24 seconds. Trollbane makes the target take 5% more damage from you for 8 seconds, and Nazgrim gives you 5% flat more strength. So, of course, the entire tree goes down, giving you extra buffs, like, for example, your damage is increased by 5% if you stay inside more grains, death and decay. You have your obliterate and your scourge strikes destroying Trollbane's Chains of Ice, turning it into an AoE ability. If an enemy dies while Nazgrim is active, your max strength increase from Nazgrim gets even larger. It goes from 5 to 8%, and then for each additional rune spent, the strength increased by 1%. This perhaps might be a bit too OP, getting upwards of 10 plus percent strength. Seems like a very powerful buff for just a single one of these riders that you can gain. And then, of course, the final point, as we have seen Blizzard do before, where they give you a bunch of different tiny buffs, and then when you use your main cooldown, you can get all of these buffs all at once. That's what Apocalypse Now makes it so that when you use Army of the Dead or Frostworm's Fury, you can call upon all four of the horsemen at your aid for 20 seconds straight. So you gain the benefits of all of these four buffs, plus all of the extra additions you can get from all of the other talents which is very very powerful you know just by using them just by using them and nothing else you gain five percent strength from nazgrim 
plus 5% more damage from Morgraine's Death and Decay, plus Trollbane, making the enemy take 5% more damage from you. So this is already upwards of 15% more damage taken in your main cooldown. So that alone would be already a pretty powerful synergy for your talents. It's made even better by the fact that it's of course very thematic, very flavorful. You get to summon different, you know, very well-known and lore relevant characters. It's of course a far cry from the terribleness that the boring nameless pathetic ancestors being summoned by a shaman now if a shaman was summoning four different very powerful and popular old shamans doing different things when you summon them maybe that hero talent 3 would have been more interesting however it did not so it's a terrible one this one though is much more flavorful and not just flavorful but for now the buffs provided by this talent 3 are very powerful Technically speaking, it's quite passive. It doesn't actually bring you to do many different things that you weren't doing before. Perhaps the most different thing is keeping track of who has Trollbane casted Chain of Ice on, because you have to obliterate it to, to shatter the Chain of Ice, but that's about it. The rest is mostly just passive. However, it's a very good flavor of passive for Frost and Unholy Death Knight. Now we have left the more experimental for last, because the last one is Flame Shaper, which is the cross between Devastation and Preservation. Now, we praised already the cross actually between all of these specs, because Preservation crossing with Augmentation had some very powerful buffs and some insane defensive powers, which were likely going to be nerfed definitely before the release of the expansion and then also we praised the cross between devastation and augmentation because there was the fear that a pure dps spec like devastation being crossed with augmentation would have given them a bunch of support beta cack talents about buffing other players when you want to be the chad dps as a devastation evoker and luckily the cross between dev and og actually was quite more focused on damage on flat out more damage for devastation which is cool now, this one though is a cross between a pure DPS, like Devastation, and a pure healer, like Preservation. It's curious that this is the one that allows you to change your playstyle the most, because as we've gone through many of these, we pointed out how they could have been cool, how they might have been cool or nice or flavorful, but many of these features were almost completely passive. A, you know, either it's a continuous buff you get on you that you can expend at the very end, sometimes it's a, it's a much bigger buff that happens less often, other times it's a single cooldown on a, every 90 seconds. In the case of these two evoker specs, it's actually a much shorter ability, because engulf is just a 20 second cooldown ability, which on top of that you can then increase to have an additional charge. So it's two charges on a 20 second cooldown, meaning this would be a quite frequent part of your rotation. This is actually a button you put on your bars and press very often, as opposed to what we have seen on pretty much all of the other hero talent trees. So the thing about this is that, of course, right now we don't know anything about it. We don't know the damage. We don't know the healing. We don't have the spell coefficients. So all we know is that you are putting a dot on an enemy or a hot on a friendly target. And for each of your periodic effects on the target, your, the effectiveness is increased by 50%. So basically a Resto Druid mastery, the more hot on the target, the more it heals. If you're a Preservation Evoker, you can put on the target Echo, then cast Dream Breath, duplicate the Dream Breath, apply Reversion on the target. Now you have three different hots, so this engulf has 150% more effectiveness, for example. You are further helped by having an extra 50% effectiveness for free, because now Essence abilities are enhanced with Flame, dealing 20% of healing or damage done as fire over 8 seconds, meaning that now every one of your Essence abilities will leave behind an 8 seconds hot or dot, so this one can have always basically 50% more effectiveness. But there are actually some other significant effects in this tree, like for example, critical strike chance against targets above 50% HP is increased by 10%. 
This is already fantastic in the raid for a Devastation Evoker, but it's even better everywhere for preservation. Because unlike fighting enemies that eventually will have to drop below 50% HP and eventually you will not gain this buff anymore, for a healer this buff will basically always be active. Yeah, sometimes you will tag some players below 50% HP, but many more times this will continue to be relevant as far as chances to crit go. This gets even better with this, which at the moment seems a bit too OP. Living Flame, Reversion and Azure Strike critical strikes have a guaranteed chance to trigger Essence Burst. Essence Burst makes your spenders free. This seems quite OP, especially of course for a Preservation Evoker. A Preservation Evoker that of course can spread echoes to 10 different targets and then use Reversion and then cast 10 Reversions. As long as you have a couple of those crit, you now get two free SS Burst charges just off of this talent alone. There is also a pretty interesting mechanic that could be extremely powerful if only it was targeted, which is Life Cinder's Renewing Blaze also applies to one nearby injured ally when you cast it. Renewing Blaze is an, is an extremely powerful and underappreciated defensive cooldown for your, for your spec, provided you can stay alive throughout the duration of it. So if you don't get one shot, if you don't get two shot, if the damage you're about to take isn't massive, but it is a slow over time, but very dangerous type of rot over time damage, this talent alone can almost deal with the damage by itself. Now, the fact that you can cast it on someone else now as a, not just a healer, but even as a devastation evoker, it can be quite helpful. Unfortunately, it's completely RNG. So obviously, as a preservation evoker, you would like to have casted this on your balanced druid in your group, on your hunter, on your shaman, on your group, because they are made of paper, and instead it just flies off and tags the tank. It flies off and tags the warlock. You know, those are less favorable targets to be using this one, but it's still cool that it can work and it can have a pretty powerful effect. The final point of this, which is the more interesting one that leaves up for even more playmaking, I guess, Engulf consumes eight seconds of fire breath from the target or dream breath, of course, detonating it and dealing damage or healing all nearby targets equal to 300% of the amount consumed reduced beyond five targets. So. It's an extra AoE effect for both Devastation and Preservation. Remember, we now have two charges of Engulf, so you can essentially do Engulf and then consume it and then Engulf your second charge and then consume it again, for example. Maybe, we don't know precisely, maybe you can cast two Engulfs on the same target and double detonate it. Maybe Engulf works with Echo for Preservation Evoker, so you can now spread Engulf to 10 different targets. We don't know yet, we only have the tooltips, but just from the descriptions alone, many of these new tools for both Devastation and Preservation are very good. From the new abilities, the new dot, the new hot for you, plus the explosion of the dot, the extra cool things like the crit and the guaranteed crits to give you Essence Burst, which will also interact with your rotation, so you don't just get a new button, you get something that can also give you other ways to play your rotation. Something cool, added utility with things like life cinders. If we had to find the bad of this hero talent is the defensiveness, is the tankiness, is the survival part of this one. Because this one doesn't actually have much of any survival or defensiveness. We have pointed out, of course, Life Cinder, but that's just giving Renewing Blaze to someone else, not to you. You don't get more tanky because of it. And even the opposite, if you want to be selfish and not take Life Cinders, Draconic Instincts give you a small chance to cauterize, so a small chance to heal you for 30% of the damage you took. That's completely RNG. It's not, it's not something you can rely on when a big boss hit is about to kill you and you want to hope to stay alive. This is not really gonna do anything. So, as a, an already reasonably squishy spec, you might have expected something more tanky, especially with the cross between dev and press. Since augmentation is more tanky by itself, maybe in here is where we could have found something extra for the for the survival of these two specs, which is not coming. Funnily enough, the, the strongest of the survival combo is between preservation and augmentation, and not really between these two. But overall, as a combo, this is very powerful for both devastation and preservation, and definitely the one that can change 
your playstyle, your rotation, your buttons to press in your gameplay the most out of the hero talent trees we have seen so far. So at least deserve some praises just off of that. This were all of our previewed by Blizzard Hero Talent Trees added a few days ago, all 12 of them. We have made a random eye test ranking of the Hero Talent Trees given their first iteration so far, and this is what we have gotten in the end. So with this pointed out, of course, you guys are free to show your own takes on what did you think were your favorite of your hero talents that you have seen from the latest release of hero talents from blizzard besides this i'm going to leave you to the rest of the beginning of your week on this monday thanks of course as usual to all of the patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of the channel which can <sighs> breather as usual be given completely for free by liking and commenting down below as well as subscribing to the channel itself now with these pointless things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching, see you guys tomorrow, and in the meantime, fuck, I started losing my voice and my breath at the very end of the video, luckily we made it.